taste of Jewish life and culture here on the streets of Krakow, Poland. A resurgence of old traditions here in Kazimierz, which is the name of Krakow's Jewish quarter. That's where we find native New Yorker Jonathan Ornstein, a leading force behind this rebirth. Before the war in Poland, there were 3.5 million Jews. That was about 10% of the population. So big cities like Warsaw was a third Jewish, Krakow was a quarter Jewish, 60% um, of the lawyers in 1939 on the eve of World War II were Jewish, 40% of the doctors. Kashmir's was the center of Jewish life in Krakow for more than 500 years until the German army stormed the nation. It was Hitler's final solution to eradicate the Jewish people and turn Poland into a subservient country. 90% of Poland's pre-war Jewish population was annihilated. There were 90,000 Jews in Krakow before the Holocaust. It was a community that was uh, both interesting and diverse. Um, well integrated into the community. Dr. Michael Barenbaum is another New York native and one of the world's leading Holocaust scholars. He led me and a group of millennials on an emotional and educational journey through Poland. The power of the places that remained. Together we witnessed firsthand the revival of Jewish life and legacy here in Krakow with Jonathan paving the way. I moved to Krakow to teach Hebrew. I was teaching Hebrew here at the university in the Department of Jewish Studies. It's about 150 non-Jewish students that are getting a degree in Jewish studies, which was interesting to me that all these non-Jews wanted to learn about Jewish uh, subjects. This interest in Jewish life has been manifesting itself throughout the country. In 2008, a group of international nonprofits decided to build this Jewish community center called the JCC here in Krakow. Jonathan became the executive director. Ever since, he's seen a steady flow of Polish citizens visit the center to share some of their incredible newly discovered stories. So you have people walking in here to the JCC almost every day who've just found out that they're Jewish. Marciana Kubala, who works here at the JCC, is one of those people. When she was 13 years old, she searched online for her family tree. That's where she discovered her Jewish roots, all of the women on her mother's side. Our parents uh, didn't feel comfortable to, to share this with us because in, during the communism time, it wasn't safe to say out loud, uh, look, I'm Jewish. So they were just used to that it's something that you should hide. Jonathan says stories like Marciana's are fascinating, but not uncommon. We've had people who've come in and told us deathbed confessions from their grandparents who'd been hidden as children and, and, and given over to non-Jews, and then the last thing their, their murdered parents had told them was never tell anyone you're Jewish. The JCC welcomes those who come here with these remarkable stories, as well as others who are just interested in learning more about Judaism. The center is a nonprofit that relies heavily on donations. Every Friday, the JCC hosts Shabbat dinner for more than 100 people, a mix of Jewish community members, visitors to Poland, and even Holocaust survivors. Jonathan also led the JCC in starting this kindergarten program called Frida, which means joy in Polish. It's the first Jewish kindergarten center to open in Krakow in more than half a century. There are some people of whom it can be said uh, they are in the right place at the right time. Michael believes Jonathan has set forth on a momentous mission that's picking up speed. Daily tours now give visitors a glimpse into what life used to be like here decades ago. Jewish gift shops, bookstores, museums, and restaurants once again line these cobblestone streets. <laughs> Over in the old town of Krakow, the main square is also bustling with visitors from all over the world. Krakow is the rare large city in Poland that was left virtually undamaged during the war. The town also had a very unique history. The Germans used it as the capital of Poland, in part to demoralize the Pole by taking away their political capital, which was Warsaw, and consequently Krakow emerged from the war relatively unscathed because the Germans did not destroy any of its buildings. As 
life continues to flourish in Krakow, more and more Polish Jews proudly put their culture on full display here. Though it's hard to say the exact number of Jewish people living in the country now. The stats are very difficult because sort of Jewish life went underground here during communism. The survivors that stayed in Poland went underground because there was a lot of anti-Semitism. At this point at the JCC we have 700 Jewish members, but there are many, many more than that in, in Krakow. I would say that if you had perfect knowledge, if you could look at every uh, person walking down the street in Poland and see all four of their grandparents, then I think that you have probably 100,000 Poles today that have at least one Jewish grandparent. In a country like Poland, where the Jewish presence is often defined by its absence, it's been heartening for those leading this movement to watch the reawakening of old traditions. There is optimism here that the increasing tolerance and acceptance will continue to move this country forward. Dana Arshin, Fox News.